So I guess this, this would be a great time to ask and get into the discussion around the oppositional nature of consumption. It's disgusting. Yeah. Like, it's poison. It really is awful. Yeah. It's no secret that drinking and smoking of any kind is kind of frowned upon in evangelical circles. With arguments of the addictive nature of these habits or biblical arguments like taking care of your body and not stumbling the weaker brother. But with so many intellectuals within the broader Christian community, from apologists to philosophers, folks in the reform community, the Inklings, J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, consuming everything from nicotine to alcohol, is there a Christian or even biblical justification for these things? Well, I was pleasantly surprised to discover that Matt Frapp from the popular Pints with Aquinas podcast, my favorite Catholic podcast right now, sorry, Trent Horn, is not only a cigar enthusiast, but also owns Cigar Lounge. Well, what if this issue isn't as clean cut and cut and dry as you think? Maybe even by the end of this, you'll want to enjoy a cigar. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that you can watch the full extended 30 minute walkthrough and sit down conversation with Matt Frad at Chesterton Cigar Lounge on Patreon right now with the free seven day trial. Just click the pinned comment in the link below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace. All right, Matt, thank you so much thank for you. welcoming me in. Um, this is this is your cigar lounge. How did this place come about? So this was a tobacco establishment prior to us opening it. It was actually just a rundown place. I don't know for how many years before we opened it. Um, it was a dream of ours to create a place where people could come together and have a cigar and talk like human beings. And so for that reason, we have no screens in the lounge. We have no electronic music and we are seriously considering getting rid of Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think cig cigarettes are sort of something that you got to get through, you yeah. know, it's like you get out of the, your office, you go outside yeah. and you, you slam a couple down. This is a very different experience. Yeah. I mean, people tend to do this when they're reading or contemplating or having a good conversation with a friend. Uh, I read a sign once in a cigar lounge that said something like a cigar is as good as the experience uh, that is linked with it or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So a cigar has three elements to it. So you have the uh, the wrapper, the binder and the filler. Uh -huh. So I suppose that would be the difference between this and what the black and mild right. that, you know, cigarettes are usually infused with all sorts of chemicals. Yep. This is, I'm not saying it's good for you, but it yeah. is only leaf. So it's not, it's not the same as a cigarette that, or a black and mild that has a bunch of other stuff, you're just getting tobacco in the leaf. You're just getting the leaf. So it's less bad for you. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. not a scientist, nor okay. do I play one. Is this right here? Is this like a gold one? Is it a gold? Yeah, they have all sorts of ways of uh, making them look interesting. Uh, I think it's really important that you don't let people tell you what you should like. It's sort of like with wine. If you, were to, you enjoy a $5 bottle of wine, sure. then more power to you. Why should you be spending $200 on a bottle? So. You know, taking a cigar from time to time and then deciding what you like is probably yeah. the way to go. So I guess this this would be a great time to ask and get into the discussion around the oppositional nature of, of consumption. You have some folks who will say, body's a temple, yeah. it's bad for you. Yep. How, how do you wrestle with that as, as a Christian that consumes? tobacco. Yeah, well, I agree that the, our bodies are sacred and that we should treat them with respect. And so I appreciate where the question is coming from. I haven't really thought this through because I don't consider myself a sort of apologist for nicotine consumption or tobacco smoking. So maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and I have no desire to encourage other people to do it if they don't want to do it. But just thinking it through, it would seem to me that the argument seems to say something like uh, you ought not to engage in activities that are likely to have negative health risks. I don't think we're convinced about that in other realms. Like driving a car is a activity that that heightens your risk of uh, bodily injury. Playing certain sports does the same thing. Uh, eating dessert probably does as well. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any good evidence that suggests that alcohol is good for you. On the contrary, I think we've got good reason to think that alcohol is not good for us. And yet, I think most Christians would think that in moderation, this is acceptable. Uh, so why why not apply that to cigar smoking? I'm not sure. So this is my private stash because there's nothing left. So you sold out? Yeah, we sold out completely. We're about to buy a bunch more. I, first of all, this is one time for the for the pints. 
what a queen is branding on this. This is gorgeous. Yeah. Wherever did your logo is Thank you. Chef's kiss. And then in here Ooh. we have an image of Thomas. Yes. Teaching the teachers. And then we oh, have my yeah. goodness with the so this is a yeah. Byzantine chasuble. With the, um, the actual logo is on the cigar. It's beautiful, isn't it? You you can smoke that tonight if I convince you. We'll see. I'm, I'm becoming more and more convinced. <laughs> I like to think of cigars like a shot of espresso and okay. pipes like a nice cup of tea. Okay, so, you know, so these are less intense. I think so. What I love, my favorite time of the day to have a cigar, a cigar is the morning time. Okay. So that's usually my breakfast is cigar and coffee. Do you, would you place it in the same category as caffeine where we consume caffeine? Most people would probably not have an issue with consuming caffeine. It is a stimulant. Uh, I love my tea, my yerba mate teas, right? A lot of folks who work out probably consume some form of like pre-workout. And would you say it's kind of in that in that same category as something that's like, hey, in moderation? Well, I don't know. I think I would think I don't. I haven't really done the research, but I would think that cigars are probably much worse for you than coffee, wouldn't you think? I would think yes. most people would say that. Well, it depends on how you have your coffee. If you have a coffee with sugar, yeah, good point. <laughs> it is interesting. I mean. <laughs> You gotta tell us more about this lounge. There's all kinds of crazy stuff on the wall. Uh, walk me through what, what we're, we're- You go to most cigar lounges in America and there's just giant televisions on the wall blasting politics or football. And so we didn't want that at all. Yeah. Um, nor did we want electronic music. I think Tolkien famously said that if he walks into a pub and he hears a radio, he walks right back out again. <laughs> I'm not saying we have to be like that, but you know, this is a water buck that I uh, shot in Namibia a couple of years ago with a 300 wind mag for those who are interested. This is a, a red harder beast. Um, I think it was 380 yards I shot that with. I shot it mainly because it looks like Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> so we have here, uh, you know, Chesterton, Tolkien, Lewis, Belloc, and then uh, Peter Kreeft, who is uh, still alive, which is why, why you notice he's an inch down from the rest. Uh -huh. Once he dies, uh -huh. he will ascend to the ranks of the other great uh, literary minds. Wow. That's awesome. How, how do you feel about this? You, you tell me what you think. So there's there's passages that people will use about being sober-minded, staying this sober. It's delicious. delicious. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> I love it. Passages about being sober-minded. And so if someone is utilizing a substance as an upper, mm -hmm. right, or as a stimulant, it, are they still remaining sober-minded? Yeah, what would, when I think of being sober-minded, I would think um, having one's sort of um, faculty of reason, not being impaired. And if that gets impaired significantly, then you're no longer sober-minded. So, I mean, people, even if they have a glass of wine, they're not just having a glass of wine because of the taste. They like the physiological effect it has on them. Yeah. Um, and that is an upper or a downer, I'm not sure. But... Um, whatever they enjoy it and people can enjoy that in moderation and if you want to say that they can't then obviously you're put in a very awkward situation with the second chapter of john's gospel mm -hmm. you know water um, twine so it's, it's like christians are like oh okay we can't touch that one you know but certainly drunkenness is a grave sin mm -hmm. thomas aquinas referred to those who got drunk or, or drank too much as drunkards mm -hmm and this is uh, a serious sin. Uh, yeah, I, I, I personally don't want a substance in my body that's gonna make me cope. I think that's what frightens me about both alcohol and cannabis, is that maybe without realizing it very quickly, you're using it to cope when there might be actually more beautiful ways of doing that, mm. maybe through prayer, maybe through talking through the issues that you're having with your spouse or child or friend that you may be avoiding because these things sort of put you at ease when yeah. maybe you shouldn't be at ease. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming the majority of the folks who come here are probably males. Yeah. What's, what's the significance of men having their own space to get away, yeah. sit, talk, think? Well, sort of thing. certainly women are welcome and women do come and we love having them here. But yeah, you're right. Primarily it's fellas coming together to talk. One of the things I love about a cigar is once you light it up, it's a commitment. You're now going to have to sit there for about an hour, an hour and a half. 
And so if you and I light up a cigar together, we've just made a commitment. Um, it's very conducive, I think, to human interaction where we can think together and talk together. Mm. It's very calming. Um, and I don't know if it's true or not that men don't naturally meet each other and get into a random conversation. I don't usually do that, right? Like I don't go to a coffee shop or, a, mm. or, or the mall. I don't think I've ever been to a mall in the last 10 years, but you know, and then just strike up a conversation with a fella. But you know, I live in Florida now and I'll go to a shop and yeah, you're both there and yeah. you, it's kind of an easy uh, way to start Are these shops pretty common? Like, um, I'm, you you usually seeing, find a couple in every city. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of like hookah lounges pop up, yeah. but I'm, I'm not too familiar with this, this world. Yeah, I'd say every major city I've been in definitely has a couple of cigar okay. lounges. Got it. And when you say in moderation, what does moderation look like for you? That's a good question. I think moderation is a difficult thing. I think if I was smoking a cigar and I started to feel negative effects, uh-huh. I would go, okay, I'm smoking too much. Yeah. Or if I was to get to the point where I couldn't go a day or a week without having a cigar, uh, I would think, oh, do I, want, do I want to live like that where I feel sort of enslaved to this thing? I was shocked to learn that America has the, uh, uh, the shortest life expectancy among wealthy countries. Mm-hmm. So my understanding, you can correct me in the comment section, is that Australians tend to live in Australia into the 80s, whereas the average life expectancy of an American is, I think, maybe mid 70s. Like and is it despite right the fact that so much money is poured into healthcare, mm-hmm. I think a lot of that has to do clearly with the crap that Americans consume. Traditional American diet. It's disgusting. Yeah. Like it's poison. It really is awful. Yep. So I, I mean, I understand that an argument for smoking is not, well, you eat bad stuff too. That is a fallacy, I get that. But I'd be a lot more open to receiving someone's indignation, let's say, if they were eating a sort of clean diet, if they were eating paleo and they don't eat trans fats or, um, you know, whatever. You you work out, you're in great shape, right? I wouldn't say I'm in great shape, but I do work out. You're within a healthy BMI, you look healthy, you know? Do you think that sometimes when it comes to consumption of alcohol, consumption of uh, cigars, are you the exception to the rule? And meaning that you actually have a degree of self-control, you could smoke one, you could have a drink, you're not gonna be drunk. And in that, someone can argue, hey, Matt, you're the exception to the rule, but the average person who's consuming alcohol, just like you would say the average person who's consuming cannabis, they're going to be kind of sloppy with it. They're going to have one too many. And so is there a license to yeah. cause them to stumble as the Apostle Paul writes, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you know, like the things we do in moderation, the people who follow us may do in excess. Yeah. Well, I mean, that argument could be applied to Christ turning water into wine. You know, maybe this was okay for you, our, my blessed Lord, and maybe for those here at the wedding, but think of the millions of people who are gonna read this. <laughs> what do we have? we have Paul, I think he tells Timothy, is it? Uh, yep. To take a little bit of wine yep. for your stomach and that sort of thing. Yep. Um, the same argument could be made there. And if you're not willing to make that argument against him, why, and that reason is my reason, you know? So, so I would say like if, if I knew that you had, uh, uh, you were trying to overcome cigarettes. Uh, I wouldn't invite you here and I wouldn't want to smoke around you because I want what's best for you and I wouldn't want to do something that would lead you to act in a way to your detriment. Yeah. Knowledge of someone else's liberty is not what causes people to stumble. Mm. It's the wickedness within our own heart, James says. You know, it's the wickedness within our own heart, the desires within our it own heart. entices us, yeah. yeah. All right, well, you, ma- you made some good arguments. I've passed on the cookies earlier. Okay. So. Why not? Let's have one of these uh, official Pints with Aquinas cigars. I got the lighter backwards. That's how you guys know I'm a, I'm a rookie. Looks like you may have done this before. Only with cannabis. <laughs> Beautiful. What, what, what do you enjoy about smoking cigars? Is it kind of what I said or are there other things? You know, it's pretty manly. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, I mean, there's certainly, um, I think there can be like superficial reasons people get into things. So even like vain reasons, mm. but then they don't stick around for the vain reasons. It actually develops into something better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah.